Hi everybody, my name is Kevin. I've been working on uh, 118 and other scale models for a number of years now. I think it was back in uh, 2011, I went to Target um, and they had these little Team Bravo action figures. And I just thought these have incredible detail. I'm like, why doesn't, didn't G.I. Joe ever do this? And so before that, I hadn't been into toys at all, but I was just so amazed by the detail level that I started collecting them. And then eventually I started building, uh, taking like G.I. Joe models and 118 scale models and just customizing them because that was a lot of fun. I started on tomahawks and G.I. Joe dragonflies and things like that. Uh, and then I found out about BBI and uh, 21st Century that actually made realistic models, unlike G.I. Joe. And so I started buying those and customizing those. And it's just a lot of fun. It's always fascinated me. Um, I have ambivalent feelings towards the military. I think America's military is far too big and far too uh, overused uh, in the world. I, I believe in um, more peaceful ways of um, interacting with other countries, but that's a discussion for another day. What we will be working on for this Udemy class is um, how to create customized vehicles like these little guys here. Um, and how to use Tinkercad to create 3D um, models and 3D print and print them on a 3D printer uh, for use with the models. Um, and also uh, taking uh, the item you've created, putting it on a background, uh, and then creating using uh, Adobe Affinity um, an interesting background setting for it so it looks realistic and it looks like it's in the real world. And then also I'll discuss what you can do with that um, in terms of using models for advertising. Um, uh, if you wanted to create a model, say, uh, you could sell it on eBay and things like that um, and create a business out of it, which I've done. Um, so I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through all the steps. I'm going to take a base helicopter. Um, and I'm going to modify it into something that looks really good, uh, something that you can um, put on a nice background and make look realistic. Um, you can sell it on eBay if you want to, uh, or you can just hold on to it um, and have fun with it. So thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to the class. All right, the first thing we're going to do is find the base model that we're going to use for our helicopter. I'm going to be using this Chapmay True Heroes helicopter. Uh, as the base. As you can see, it's kind of um, undetailed, cartoonish, unrealistic. It looks like a kid's toy, basically. So we're going to take the green version of this helicopter, this one that I'm going to get, and change it into something that looks realistic enough to use for our uh, model. All right, so I got this Soldier Force, uh, kind of Chap May, I believe is the brand, uh, CH-53 Sentinel-1 helicopter. Um, I got it from shopgoodwill.com for uh, about 40 bucks total. I've kind of removed it from its packaging, just clipped it loose. Um, basically, the first step always is to remove all of the extraneous, unnecessary parts that I'm just not going to use. Um, we're going to change this helicopter from something really like kiddish, childish, and unrealistic into something awesome and very realistic. So we just pop off the little parts that will come off. Uh, anything that won't come off, just go ahead and leave on for now. Alright, so we are going to paint this thing eventually. So now I go ahead and remove all the stickers. coming off 
pretty good. Yeah, they're kind of sticking. That one's not going to matter though. All right, that one came up easily. Yeah, these are going to get painted over, so I don't want the uh, paint to come out rough because sticker was underneath. And then I can wipe it with some rubbing alcohol to get it all the way off. All right, so the next part of this uh, video involves Tinkercad. The example, I'm gonna do some 3D printing for this helicopter from some uh, models that I created for the last one of these that I did. But to show how Tinkercad works, I'm going to uh, do a tail for this helicopter using uh, Tinkercad. So the best thing to do is to use a millimeter uh, measuring ruler. And I want the tail to go approximately out to here, I would say. So 11 um, cm, and of course it's 110 uh, millimeters because the metric system is super easy. And then it's going to be about 50 wide. So 50 by 110 is going to be the tail. And I'll walk you through this on Tinkercad. All right, one uh, item that's a large part of 3D printing is uh, Tinkercad. 
Uh, it's what I use to print all of my 3D items. Uh, it's very easy to use. Um, everything makes sense. I was using another program before, uh, and I found it to be a, a very complicated. But with Tinkercad, you're just taking objects and you're just um, chopping at them, uh, and you get them chopped down until you have what you want. Um, your items should be watertight, meaning there shouldn't be any strange holes in them. Everything should connect to everything else. Um, and then you also have to take gravity into account. So a 3D printer generally can do a right angle up to five millimeters hanging, um, anything over five millimeters and it starts to sag, but it really can kind of defy gravity if you only go up to five millimeters because it'll just slowly build onto itself. It's pretty amazing. This is gonna be the nose of the helicopter that we're creating. Um, you can see screw holes here. So the head of the screw goes in the larger part, the long part of the screw goes through here. And then uh, another aspect, which is a lot of fun is, um, this is uh, 20 centimeters across the top. So if you actually take a 20 centimeter ruler and put it across the top, you can get approximately the same size. And therefore you can take the object that you're creating and hold it up against the screen and kind of mold around it. So I took the nose of the helicopter and I placed it up against the back of this object and then I carved it out so that um, it would be the same exact shape as the helicopter. Uh, Tinkercad's a lot of fun. I love working on it. Uh, it gives you that sense of creative fulfillment when you use it. And then to actually be able to bring these things into the real world using a 3D printer um, is kind of magical. So it's super fun. So we'll be using this program to create all of the different uh, attachments that are gonna go on the helicopter that we're gonna create. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. All right, this is Tinkercad. What I did was I clicked uh, Create New Design. I entered the name of this object and it's the Falcon King tail fin because the helicopter that I'm creating is called the Falcon King. What you do is there's all kinds of different shapes and characters and different things that you can use. I'm just going to use a basic shape. So what you do is you just grab whatever shape you want to use. Since my tail fin is closest to a rectangle, I'm going to grab the square and hold down the right, um, the left mouse button as I pull it apart uh, across. I wanted it to be 50 wide, so you can either just stretch it or you can just type in 50 by 110 long, 110 millimeters. Then I want to make it um, a tail fin, it's certainly not that blocky, proportionally speaking. So I'm just going to move it until it looks like it's a length that corresponds to a tail fin. So we're going to say oh, about five millimeters at this point. And now if you look at a millimeter ruler, um, you can get a better idea for how big it actually is. So five mils is just this little part right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it um, uh, more of a aerodynamic shape like a tail fin. Um, there are a number of ways that you can do this. You can just um, take something like this and uh, stretch it out. Stretch it out here. And then you can uh, tilt it so that it's about the right angle that you want. And then you can use this to pull it up. This little uh, black arrow pulls it up. And maybe I'll stretch it out again a little bit and tell it. Make sure it goes all the way across. With 3D objects, it's possible to miss part of it. And then you use the left button to select. And then you click on this, which means combine. So you're combining the clear block object with the solid object. And that gets rid of, cuts the original object. It looks like I created a little bit of a lip right here. So we're going to hit Control Z to undo. And then we're going to take this and we're going to stretch it a little more. And then we're going to raise it a little so that it doesn't create that problem. And then maybe I'll stretch it out this way a little. And then maybe I will turn it just a hair more. And then that way it'll be really aerodynamic. And down. And then this right here, 
is obviously going to create a big lip, which we don't want. So we're going to stretch it out a little more, turn it a little more. There, that'll be good. And then we can simultaneously do the back end. So you just take this here, and then stretch it out here. Doesn't have to be as dramatic. Okay, that looks good. Let's see what we've got. It takes a second. That noise in the background is the actual 3D printer, which is not working correctly. Have to deal with it. Right, that's a nice flat one where it's straight across. And then we can always add a little detail. So for instance, this little contour line, we can use it to cut into the tail fin other, uh, uh, just slightly so that it's like that. And then we can take um, one of these cylinders and shrink it down to one millimeter on each side and then move it over to here and then move this down to about one millimeter above the surface. And then you just hit Control D, which is duplicate. And then you move it over as far as you want it, say five mils. And then if you hit Control Duplicate, duplicate again, it moves it over automatically. So you can create, which is Control D, I don't know if I mentioned Control D is duplicate. And then you go back to here and you do Control D and you grab it, put it even with the other, shrink it down a little because it goes a little farther above the surface than this one. And then you go Control D and it thinks you want that there. So actually I have to go Control D, move it over five, and then Control D all the way across. And that way we have bolts that go all the way across the tail. And I think that looks good. We're gonna end up probably gluing this on. Then you make sure that you go around it and you click that to make it all form into one item. And that is Tinkercad. Super helpful and easy to use. Alright, so there's really only one way to cut these models uh, if you need to shape them, and that's with a hacksaw. There's two different kinds of hacksaws that I use. There's the larger and the smaller. The smaller is sharper and faster at cutting things, but also less accurate. The larger is more accurate, but it takes a little more effort. So since I want this cockpit bottom to be straight, I have to cut it um, with the larger hacksaw. And so I can line up the edges, as you can see right here, so that it's an even cut. At least relatively even. So I've cut it part way. So you just saw your way through. And then towards the end, you can likely just tear the edge off and then cut it with a box cutter. And there you have it. You can of course sand this. And it'll get rid of the rough edges. And now we have our little cockpit part. Okay, so the next step is to take a Phillips, or star if you prefer, screwdriver and then unscrew all of the uh, screws because we're going to have to remove the insides of the helicopter in order to complete our project. All right, so I have now unscrewed the helicopter completely. I had to pull off the engine, which wasn't too hard. It just kind of pops off. So this is what the inside looks like. Oh pop off the front 
And what I did here was I removed this uh, blocking covering area, which was kind of like a seat, because it was really unrealistic. The actual helicopters don't have any barriers between the uh, cargo area and the cockpit. So I used a box cutter to remove those. One of these guys. And uh, now I removed all the parts, so now I can do things like paint it and add details inside. Okay, so I know this looks monstrous, but uh, basically I just designed the cockpit controls uh, system. Uh, and on this new helicopter, I've never done this before, I'm going to light it uh, underneath using green LEDs. And so what you're looking at is just measurements. So this is the main control panel. It's going to be 20 mils high, 20 mils across, and then 65 mils uh, across this way. Uh, I guess length width height. Uh, and then it's going to go onto the base, which is the uh, rest of the control panels, which goes between the pilots. And this is a model of how the dashboard will look. And it's going to be uh, supported by a little lip, which this will balance on and be glued to. All right, this is what I'll be using for the floor of the aircraft. It's just a piece of wood. And it will have sandpaper um, glued to it which will have the effect of looking like a floor. And I also wanted to show you what it looks like when the 3D printer is printing. It starts out with a kind of a rough layer and then it just smooths it out. It's super fun. So this is the floor of the helicopter. It's the wood and this is the step up for the cockpit right here. And what I've done is I've cut some just sandpaper um, to fit the inside of the helicopter. So that'll be the ground of the helicopter. Okay, now what I'm creating here is the uh, control panel for the helicopter cockpit. Another way to um, mask something is to put paper towel in it. I do this pretty often when it's hard to mask something otherwise, because I wanted this to be as white as possible for a reflective surface. Okay, so this is the landing gear now. It's all white and all one color. I think it looks really good. It'll look really good when it's on the helicopter. So as you can see, what I'm doing now is I'm uh, masking off the area that I want to remain black. And this will create a nice little pattern in the middle. Alright, so this is the color that I selected. Uh, Tamiya Gunship Gray. I got it at a little model store. I always recommend going to the mom and pop stores that are privately owned and the big stores like Hobby Lobby that are owned by evil corporations. <laughs> Ethical modeling, I think you would call it. So then I just spray all the paint on. The technique is not to use too much at once. So I just do bursts and then let it dry a little. And there we go. All right, so you just kind of give the object an even uh, flow of paint like that. And then you make sure you get all the parts and then you kind of go around it and look and make sure you've painted everything. Try not to let the paint pool too much in one area. All right, one item I wanted to point out is Tamiya Putty. Testers also makes it, but uh, what it does is it fills in gaps. So, for instance, right here I had a gap, and I filled it in with the Tamiya Putty, and then I just paint over it, and you can't really tell. I mean, you can still see the seam, but that's okay. So, yeah. All right, so this is all the parts that I have, and they're all painted now. So basically, I just have to throw them onto the helicopter. All right, this may not look like much right now, but it's the rotor head. So what I've done is I've drilled a screw, screwed a screw through the middle to connect it all. Uh, that's the swash plate there, and those are the levers that print it, um, that move the swash plate right there, which are toothpicks. It'll look good once it's on there. Okay, so what I'm doing here is stripping these wires and they are going to be all soldered together using this uh, with resistors uh, to make the flashy lights for the outside of the helicopter. All right, well this took an insane amount of effort, but it finally works, yay! That thing was a pain. <laughs> okay, what I'm doing now is I'm uh, drilling holes in the bottom to hold the uh, floor of the helicopter in place. All right, and what you see here are screw caps. 
you can buy them very inexpensively online and for the screws that are still showing on my helicopter I put them on top to hide them and they work really good. I think this is an important lesson. Uh, oftentimes when customizing you create something that doesn't quite look right and in this case I don't like the way the rotor looks. I think it's too tall. So you just fix it. You just take it apart and take it off and fix it and put it back on. Okay, so what I'm doing now is applying the stickers. What I've done is I bought some black stickers and then I painted them with spray paint, uh, this light gray, which is going to be the color for all the labels that I'm using. So then we use these fancy little guys to uh, put our sticker where it needs to go. And it works really good. All right, one more quick look at this before it goes together. All right, so what we're doing is applying decals. There, are, I'm sure, are many tutorials on this on the internet, and probably some people do it better than I do. But uh, the main thing is that you wet, wet the surface that you're going to apply the decal to. Grab the decal with these puppies. If I can. And then put it on here. And then some people use a Q-tip. I just use my finger. I've wetted this area already so that it can slip and slide because we want it to be even. That appears even to me. And then you dry it a little bit. And then you apply Microsol, which is a fixative. There's different kinds of spray on, but I couldn't find the spray on. The spray on works pretty good. The other kind I had left a residue, so hopefully this works. I'm new to this type. I actually didn't know that you needed a fixative for. It's like I moved it a little bit. And so I would just apply them with a fixative and they would like get knocked off. This decals would. And then you just let it dry. All right, one last thing we're going to do is paint the panel lines. So some people do this a little different way. This is how I do it because it's pretty easy this way. You just thin uh, black acrylic paint, it's what I use, like testers, with um, acrylic thinner. Make sure you don't use uh, the wrong kind. And then you just kind of, I just kind of go along the panel lines with a little bit of uh, this mixture. And it just gives it kind of a little bit of extra weathering detail. And that makes it look a little more realistic. A little more real world, if you will. Kind of like in Star Wars, they wanted it to be a lived in environment. And so a lot of the models they used for that were weathered really well. All right. Okay, so next we're going to create the base uh, for the model, uh, for the picture. Uh, what I use are just large uh, poster board um, panels from, usually you can get them at Walmart for under a dollar or you can get them at the Dollar Tree. So then I just use like a normal spray paint like this one, Rust-Oleum works really good. Any kind of dark gray because this is going to look like uh, asphalt for a military base. And then I don't fill it in all the way. So that it leaves kind of uh, detailing in there. Then I take the black. And kind of spray it where the white is, but I'll use some of the white too, just to give it more contour. This isn't cooperating super well because it's kind of running low.
That looks pretty good. All right, so this is the finished product. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Uh, it's got a lot of lights. It's got a lot of changes from the original. And yeah, I think it looks good. It looks a lot better certainly than it did originally. We've got our little um, control panel in here that lights up, which turned out well. That's the first one of those I've done. And um, nice little blinky lights and the, the searchlight in the front. So now what we're going to do is um, take a picture of it um, on this uh, poster board that looks like cement and then take it and um, put a background where the wall is, where the white area is so that it looks realistic uh, for our eBay sale. So let's do that now and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take Affinity, uh, which is a nice um, a photograph manipulation program, and use it to um, take the background out of this picture so that we can add in our own background. So what I often use is this little selection tool here, Flood Select, and you can determine the tolerance using this right here. Uh, depending and higher um, levels will make it uh, take out more colors and lower levels will t make it take out less colors. So then we select right here. And then it does most of the work for us. So then we take the erase tool, make it nice and big, and then just kind of chop everything out that we don't want. Sometimes it will uh, highlight areas that you don't want to get rid of, in which case you just have to go in and uh, carefully not erase those areas. So like for instance, right here, it wants to erase part of our helicopter. So we just go around it, changing the size of the cursor. these areas here and just erase all of this all right so um, one nice thing about affinity is that you can use it to clean up stuff so basically what I do is I take the uh, clone brush and then you hit uh, Alt and then select where you want to clone. So for instance, right here, or right here would be better. And then you can cover up various uh, problems with the picture. And so if I have little screws here that I don't want, uh, then I can just clone and get rid of them. And that works really good. Another nice thing about Affinity, and I'm sure other programs as well, is that you can select which background you want. So um, in this case, if I want to change the backgrounds out, I can just uh, put them in there first by dragging them, and then I can just try them on for size. So I look at this and I'm like, I don't know that I like this one as much. I want more of a dramatic background, and therefore I can take this picture and it looks really good. All right, so now we have our finished product, and we are just going to use the snipping tool now to get a clip of our picture. Uh, you can use it to sell the helicopter on eBay if you want to. You can use it to um, as the thumbnail if you want to create a YouTube video. Um, you could create all kinds of different models and use them for advertising. Just depends on what you want to do, uh, but you got yourself a really nice picture. So now you just get the thumbnail and you can use this in any application that you want. All right, thanks for joining me today, everybody. Uh, this has been a lot of fun creating this Udemy video. It's my very first. 
Um, these models can be used for all kinds of different applications. You can sell them, on, sell them on eBay. You can create a YouTube channel if you like, like I've got. Um, you can use them for various advertising things using various models. And there's all kinds of fun stuff where you can just do it for fun. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining me and have a wonderful 2021.